But yeah. there is a, 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 a there was a there was rhyme in my reason or reason in my rhyme method in my madness about asking about why Zoom what would happen if Zoom went because I was going to segue from that into <laughs> the plot of your of your new um, book which is about what would happen if all our screens went blank what would happen if um, uh, all of the technology were to suddenly go south did you come up with this idea before lockdown. Do you know, I did. Um, right. The title came to me, The Day the Screens Went Blank, because mm. it just sounded like a comedy horror for kids. And then when I thought about it, I thought, actually, it sounds like a comedy horror for grown-ups as well. Yeah, yeah. And as I started writing it, I mean, lockdown happened, and I realized that the world outside my window was getting a lot weirder than the world I was writing about. And so it started to seep in, and I realized that, you know, for kids, the past year has been... I guess, you know, it's been scary and it's yeah. been confusing and it's happened so soon into into their lives that, you know, it's in danger of becoming a kind of normality for them. And I thought that maybe this is a way to talk to kids about kind of lockdown, but without the sort of the scary pandemic side of it, but instead just a huge shift. What would happen if all the phones stopped working, um, your, your, your laptop, your tablet, whatever it might be, if you're lucky enough to have access to one, because we've come to rely so heavily on them. And the the, I mean that's the weird thing about it, isn't it? Is that is the way that reality overtook fiction? Because yeah. it, in a way we've we've recognised, in mean, like me as a parent, probably you think they spend too much time on them. But that's a catch-all term as well. That's not helpful because Minecraft is a hell of a lot more healthy than Grand Theft Auto, for example. <laughs> or they might be learning French, but still looking at a screen. Or they might be watching Peppa Pig. So the the the. There's no moralizing here. There's no it's all good or it's all bad. It's just let's take a step back from the canvas and, and have a look at how the world works, actually. Yeah, it is. It's not saying, like you say, that, that it's good or it's bad. It's just saying it is. And, um, and and what if it what if it wasn't? Because I think, you know, as you say there, we do as parents, I think we have a pang of regret sometimes mm. or, or, or guilt that our kids aren't doing the exact same things that we were in childhood. Like for me, it would have been playing football for nine hours until I was just, you know, completely sweaty and went home and necked a pint of squash or, or rode my BMX until the tires went bald. But, but that was my childhood. And it's kind of unfair for me to expect that of my kid my kid can code and he's got an understanding yes. of editing digitally and when you hear them when you hear them playing with their mates or having an adventure or keeping those running jokes running i think that's incredibly important because when my kids get home from school i don't say what did you learn today i always say what made you laugh today because i want to gain that little insight um into the real life that they live you know between the cracks and um, I think that during lockdown, we have witnessed our kids playing with other kids and, and screens, far from being antisocial, have been quite a social thing. It's kind of a, a little digital play park. Um, but like you, I mean, you've probably had the same chat with your kids about our childhoods and yeah. the, the fact that we couldn't rely, you know, on, on screens. And as an only child, I'm not really sure what I'd have done. I worry about the, the only children who haven't had people to kind of hang around with kind of on their level. And, and when I tell my kids about, you know, they can press any button and either summon up their grandparents or summon up any film that they want. Um, but for me, like you, I, I, they think I, I grew up in deprivation because I say, if I wanted to watch a film, I had to get up, walk into town, go to some weird shop, ask if I could borrow a film. Yeah. And if anyone else in my town was already borrowing that film, I wasn't allowed to watch it. And it just sounds insane. <laughs> it does, does. I never thought of it like that. That's absolutely incredible. Um, what sort of age group are you thinking of when you when you write it, when you wrote it? I, I'd say seven to twelves. Um, okay. and, um, and, and I think that um, I think there's lots of discussions that we can have in there about about family and connecting and and, and the past year. I, I um I, I've told you this before. I find your productivity shaming. <laughs> I find it, the, 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 the output that you do. For people who don't know, Danny had just a couple of highlights from his CV. Obviously presents a show on, on our sister station, Radio X, on, on Sunday mornings. But his his, uh, his book, Yes Man, was turned... Uh, stuff like this in your biography. Made into the major <laughs> Hollywood movie starring Jim Carrey. Incredible. <laughs> Saturday night game shows, BAFTAs, video games. You even appear in Assassin's Creed video games, which makes my... I nearly swore then, which, but which, which, which upsets me particularly. Have you, have, you, have you been busy during this period of enforced privation or have you allowed yourself a little bit more leisure? Um, a bit of both. I think um, for a lot of people, I mean, first of all, I've got a garden. And by law, anyone with a garden, when they mention they have a garden, they have to say almost in brackets, 
which I'm very lucky to have. Yeah, everyone's been doing um, that today. <laughs> yeah, which, and, and we are. Of and course. so I've been taking moments to, like, you know, when autumn used to arrive, it would just arrive. You'd see the leaves on the ground and you'd be like, I, I guess it's autumn. But I've been enjoying watching the seasons kind of hint at their appearance mm. and then flourish and then a new one kind of arrives and you know i've got a tree outside which i'm very lucky to have of course um, which is uh, <laughs> which is uh, like a magnolia tree and in the past i've just noticed it when it's been in bloom and when it's gone and now i'm like s- s- almost psychically willing it to bloom so i've been doing a lot of that which is i guess you know a, a form of mindfulness as yeah, much as no, i can imagine sure, it is. but then yeah writing and trying to create new things um as um as as most of the industry around me has uh, <laughs> disappeared um I d- well yeah we look forward to finding out more i i, I should mention Gemma corel is it coral coral yeah, br- amazing illustrator because the pictures are brilliant aren't they they really yeah. are is it come to what's it like when you see her pictures for the first time do you send the script to her the text to her and then then or do you collaborate yeah. from the beginning no you 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 try and you know get it right in your own head and, and yeah. hand it off and then you see what strikes the illustrator and what's brilliant is when it comes back they've added their own jokes or they've pulled out little golden moments and um and reading it to my little girl for the first time what you really notice when you're reading with a kid is their eye goes straight to the picture yes, and they're waiting for you as the grown-up to get to that bit so it makes sense and it's just a beautiful moment of connection oh i love that it's a lovely book it really is and and i mean accidentally incredibly timely isn't it incredibly <laughs> yeah. at the moment so congratulations yeah. danny i mean maybe do a little bit less okay moving forward yeah just, yeah, no, yeah i'll go and have a picnic now yeah if you want make the rest of us feel a little <laughs> A little less bad. Danny Wallace, whose new book, The Day the Screens Went Blank, is both published, well, it's out now, came out on the 18th of March, and is illustrated by, rather beautifully illustrated by Gemma.